Right. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Yes. Do you understand the hearing procedure? Yes. Okay. Let's start then with the Palestine Wheatley uh, School District. You state your name for the record, please. John S. Superintendent of Palestine Wheatley School District. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, we turned Miss Cleves down because Forest City declared an exemption. Uh, we have space and we're glad to teach her if, uh, teach her children. Y'all say she, she can go. Okay, thank you. Forest City District. Is there a representative from Forest City District to state your position? I'm Sam Jones, counsel for the Forest City School District, and we've submitted multiple uh, items uh, in opposition to um, the uh, appeal they all should look very familiar because there are no new issues they're the same issues y'all um, addressed over the past three years in various uh, incarnations of the school choice act I don't know if you want me Ms. Chair to go ahead and continue I will. I think we hear from Ms. Cleese first, and we'll bring you back, okay. Mr. Jones. Okay. Thank you. Ms. Cleese, would you step forward and give your position on, in this matter? First of all, good morning good to morning. everyone on the board. And I would just like to say uh, thank you guys for granting me the opportunity to be here to address my concerns, which involves the appeal under the Public uh, Choice Act. Basically, I'm here representing my daughter. Understand that education is essential to life, uh, and as a parent, it is my obligation to make sure that my child receives the best education that is possible. Uh, therefore, I'm here uh, with the hopes that my daughter is granted the opportunity to attend the Palestine uh, Wheatley School District. Um, I constantly read the newspapers, I constantly review the different assessments and the tests that are being. Uh, completed and utilized and I understand that the testing Palestine Wheatley School District uh, their scores is much higher than the four city school si school city district and therefore I'm just here to make sure that I give my daughter the opportunity to be a productive citizen in life and education is something that's essential and you have to have it uh, with that being said, uh, I'm the oldest of my siblings. Uh, we're all um, graduate from high school, further our education, uh, graduate uh, level. Um, I have a BS in psychology, uh, a master's in counseling. So therefore, I just want to make sure that my daughter receives the tools that is necessary in order that she can be a productive citizen and be able to contribute to the community when she matures into her adulthood. Okay, thank you. Mr. Jones. Let me offer this observation first, hopefully to shorten the proceedings. Um, the application was made, if you look at your materials, under the Opportunity School Choice Act. But this is a second grader. And the, none of the four city primary schools are in academic distress. Therefore, the application, uh, if you will, really can't be considered by this body because it's outside the scope of qualifying for an opportunity school choice transfer. Now you heard Mr. Esty say, uh, and it is what they wrote down, that they denied the application um, based on the exemption claim by Forest City. Now that's under the 2015 School Choice Act, but that's not where the application came from. It came under the Opportunity School Choice Act. I see some puzzled looks uh, uh, this individual would have been um, eligible to seek a transfer if she had been fifth grade or above. But because she's just a second grader, not coming, not seeking to come out of a school in academic distress, uh, the application should have been denied out of hand on that basis. Now, 
uh, nevertheless, we're here. Uh, uh, and I'll, so I'll try to make the rest of this presentation brief because it really addresses the exemption issue that y'all wrestled with before that I don't think even applies here, but nevertheless, that's the basis upon which she was turned down. Uh, and I compliment Ms. Cleese on her presentation, but I respectfully submit there's nothing in the presentation that takes this case out of the exemption claimed by Forest City and nothing in the presentation that uh, authorizes her to seek a transfer <coughs> under opportunity school choice. Um, so there's no legal reason before this body I respectfully submit to even consider uh, much less grant the appeal. We've been through this before for city properly claimed the exemption. You dealt with and read the Attorney General's opinion about uh, it's based on uh, an ongoing federal court case and this body's made their decision with some reluctance on the part of some to uh, respect or go along with the Attorney General's opinion. The issues are the same. Uh, nothing's changed except for the little bit of confusion about how this arose and how it came to this body. But for all those reasons, both the inapplicability of opportunity school choice in respect of this family and because you've already decided multiple times in Goodall, White, and other cases uh, that Forest City has properly claimed the exemption under the 2015 Act, uh, I think you have no option but to deny the appeal. Okay, thank you. Ms. Davis, do you have anything? Or Ms. Cleve, do you have any response to that? She does, but before we go, I just okay. wanted to address the, um, the application because when I did receive the appeal in the mail, I noticed it was an opportunity school choice and her child is not assigned to a distress school. So when I talked to her, um, you know, to ask her because I was also denied on an exemption to make sure like what did she apply under. She said that this was the application that she was just given. And I didn't feel that it was fair to deny her an opportunity to be heard by you guys simply because she might have filled out the wrong application. Okay. So that was just a clarification on that. Dr. Barth has a question, Ms. Davis. So, um, Ms. Davis, um, can you remind us of the deadline differences on opportunity school and, and, and the general public school choice? The opportunity school choice, I believe it's July 30th that you have to apply and under public school choice you have May 1st is when it was changed. But she did not get her denial letter from Palestine Wheatley until July 22nd or that or July 27th, excuse me, that's when it was dated. So give it a few days that she received it. So even though she applied in, um, I believe she, I've got her application right here. She applied on May 25th. Okay. But she wasn't, um, like I said, they didn't deny or make a decision on it until July 27th. Okay, great. Thank you. Ms. Ms. Cleese. I would like to say as well that uh, also I know I was denied, but however, my neighbor's kids was accepted in the Palestine Witness School District. So, therefore, uh, my concern is that my daughter is granted that opportunity as well. Ms. Jones? I just wanted to point out we had the same issue that Professor Barth just raised in the Goshaw, Goshaw uh, appeal last time where the very same district, Palestine Wheatley, was late in making the denial and I urged the board not to hold that against Four City because it had nothing to do with formulating or determining if the denial would be made or when, so I don't think that's an issue that can be held as to, against Forest City. Is it okay, a question? Uh, yes, is Forest City making efforts to uh, gain unitary status as required for an accredited school in the state of Arkansas? I, I think what we pointed out uh, uh, in, in, in this submission and all the others is uh, the issues of uh, the applicability of the McKissick decree are currently set for trial uh, in January the, uh, before Judge William R. Wilson, well I guess it's Billy Roy Wilson now, and uh, while that is not specifically a unitary status case, uh, the issues are very, very similar and the outcome <coughs> of that case will go a long way toward determining the issue you just raised. 
Uh, how old is the, that case, the McKissick case, that's going to be heard in January? No, it's not the McKissick. I'm sorry. If I said McKissick, McKissick is the desegregation case. It's the lawsuit that Forest City brought against Palestine Wheatley and Wynn, in which one of the defenses raised by both Palestine Wheatley and Wynn is that the Forest City District is, in fact, unitary. Okay, so for a city didn't initiate gaining unitary status? Not in the technical sense, no. Okay, and are they, and are you by extension, aware that that is part of being an accredited school in Arkansas? Well, as a matter of fact, when we, I think we've already responded to, I guess it's the commissioner's memorandum, uh, and submitted that report that addressed the very question you asked several weeks ago as part of the standards for accreditation review. Right. Ms. Davis. Uh, Commissioner Memo was sent out at the beginning of September that outlined um, the requirements for districts that were not declared by court order in full unitary status. And I do believe that the standards unit and the equity assistance units have looked at those and determined that none of the responses were sufficient. So a letter is being uh, drafted and sent out to all the districts outlining a very specific um, set of tasks that they need to provide to us um, in order to stay um, um, in alignment with the standards and otherwise they could be placed on probationary status. Okay, and also the most recent Attorney General's opinion, did it address ADE or the State Board of Education? I believe it addressed ADE, yes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Dr. Park, did you have a question? I guess, I guess it's a question for Palestine Wheatley, and, and, it, um, and, and, and we, it may may not be answerable, but Mrs. Cleve's most recent comment about her neighbor, do you have any insight into that case? I don't, Dr. Barr. Okay. I, don't, I don't know who her neighbor is or where they, what the situation is. With okay. Thank you. Any closing comments from any, either party? Ms. Perry? I'm sorry, <laughs> Ms. Perry. I'm looking at Ms. <laughs> Ms. Davis. <laughs> Well, you've heard the presentations. What, what is the pleasure of the board? Dr. Barr? First off, I want to thank Ms. Cleves for her dedication to her, uh, <coughs> uh, to, to, to her, to her, her young people. And, um, uh, but because of the, the ongoing um, absence of unitary status, um, I will uh, move to deny the appeal. So Dr. Barr has made the motion to deny the appeal. Is there a second? Ms. Chambers seconds. All in favor? Aye. To Dr. Barth and Ms. Chambers. Any opposed? Aye. Aye. Are you, you're abstaining? Aye. Aye. So there are three votes to um, against um, denying the waiver. So what's action now? So you're denying because. Dr. Barr, I'm sorry, I'm confused. It's probably the head call. There, his motion was to, to deny the waiver, and that motion did not pass. Okay, I didn't, I didn't hear Ms. Childress, okay. so I'll just make sure. I mean, Ms. Childress, vote, so just making sure. Thank you. So, um, I mean, we have made, I don't know how many decisions like this, and um, it feels that we, we have to have consistency in our, in our, in our decisions. Okay. Ms. Clay, you want to give, give some clarity or input? or First, let me make sure I understand. Um, the motion was to deny. It was seconded. And then there were three votes in favor of that motion. No. 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 There were two votes two in votes. favor of the motion, and that was Ms. Chambers and Dr. Barb. There were okay. three uh, opposing. Okay. Then, um, effectively, the the opposite would take place but if that's the the will of the board i would advise you to someone to make an additional motion and you heard her recommendation action. so uh, dr barth wants to have a comment before uh, yeah miss clay um because of our our history on these cases <laughs> and the fact that we have denied uh, now over several years but this year a number of cases including from the same district um, what I mean does that raise um, concerns about equity 
Um, there is certainly an argument that each individual appeal before you is, like I said, individual, and that um, I assume you all make that determination based on the facts of each individual appeal. So, and there certainly could be an argument, argument the other way, but um, you have to make a determination of the facts of each appeal. Uh, Madam Chairman, <clears throat> based on the fact that we want parents to be involved, and we state that repeatedly, and based on the fact that most desegregation cases were brought because of the inequities for African American children, and this is an African American child, and based on the fact that the Attorney General's opinion spoke to ADE's involvement, but not to State Board of Education's, I move that we grant the uh, transfer uh, for the Cleve, uh, Mrs. Cleve and her student. The motion is uh, to, from Ms. Zook to grant the transfer from the Forest City District to the Palestine Wheatley District for Ms. Cleves. You heard the motion, is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Williamson. Uh, question, Dr. Barr. Comment, and you know, the, the, the reason the school choice case was changed, uh, the law was changed was because the old school choice law took race into account. Um, the federal courts deemed that um, unconstitutional um, and therefore then the law was changed and I, I just am very, very troubled by, uh, by, this, um, by this consideration uh, in this case. So I'll, I'll be voting no, obviously, but I think, it's, I think we're moving down a troubled path here. Sorry. I, I've struggled with this since the was well, I think my fourth meeting today, so only 80 left. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and for the first three meetings, I mean, I've really struggled with, with with this whole concept. And you know, acknowledging that there's federal court orders out there, many that haven't been looked at for decades. Um, and I believe that you know every student has a right do a good education and I think every family defines that a little bit differently and if this family believes that she'll get a, a better education in another district I you know I'm gonna switch votes you know from what I've done in the past to um, approving this one um, it's not without a lot of um, discussions with several people um, but I, I feel like that's the right thing to do I have a question um, and I have no idea what the right protocol is. I don't want to stand on consistency if we're consistently wrong. And I do understand the unique circumstances that have surrounded each one of these. But I question what the core uh, evaluative process is for when we, when there's a law or a policy that we need to abide by. What, what is it that it's core that we're held accountable to? And then where do the variables really come into play as opposed to being so I don't want us to be horribly inconsistent where you have no idea how these would be determined uh, case by case. So I don't know if there's a process for bringing that back and really understanding our position. We talk about it every time and yet the outcome is a little bit different. And so I would just ask if there's some means for us to bring this topic to a more, uh, to a more consistent place. Taking individual circumstances into consideration but being more consistent in our core position. I the commissioner and then maybe Ms. Davis? Well, I, I mean, I would respond that there is inconsistency in each of these situations when you dig down into the history. I mean, because each of these districts in whatever form they were in at the time. I mean, you remember uh, a couple months ago or maybe it was last month, you know, we had a, a district that geographically look nothing like the district that was impacted by the desegregation order at the time so to I, I would just say I, I think the consistency lies in analyzing each one of the cases and looking at this, the the distinct backgrounds some are court rulings some are uh, health education and welfare uh, agency rulings of, of an agency that doesn't exist. I mean, there are a number of factors that uh, that come into play in each of these. You know, factors of uh, that, as Dr. Barth mentioned, you know, the, the race of 
the students that we're talking about that at one point in time was in statute a factor and now it's no longer a factor <laughs> but it is what it is I mean th those are some of the realities and I think this board just has to uh, be comfortable in analyzing each one and making a vote as individual members that this collective board then moves forward with that decision and um, is I just wanted to add that hopefully um, with the district, you know, they're having to self-report now, which is why uh, the standards unit had been, you know, had had difficulty in um, enforcing the set of standards that they make strides to uh, attain unitary status. But districts are self-reporting for purposes of school choice now. And so now that the standards unit is starting to enforce that because they know which districts to look at, then hopefully a lot of these districts that have really old um, you know, 1958 desegregation orders or orders that they didn't even know about. Well, hopefully, um, you know, especially the ones that claim that they're unitary but don't have a court order uh, declaration of unitary status, that long term that those will be able to um, be addressed and, and be declared unitary, and then this won't even be an issue. And let me, if I may, add to that. That's a good point. It brought something up uh, that I had actually looked up because we talk about it in terms of unitary status, but that's not the only obligation in our standards it's complete full and complete unitary standard status full and complete unitary status and have been released from court supervision so there are two prongs to that and I think that's where mr. Harvey and his team are reviewing those submissions determining that they are insufficient according to the language of, of our rule and then working with those districts to uh, provide information that is in compliance with that rule and, and the letter that's going to go out to the districts that did respond um, to the commissioner's memo has a list of seven things that they should include in their updated supplemental response. And it includes the areas in which the district feels that they have reached unitary and which issues, uh, areas they struggle with, a detailed timeline and plan for how and when they plan on um, either reaching unitary status and getting a court order declaration in addition to providing court documents and some other things. So in this situation, as a, you know, we've heard prob probably more requests for transfers from Forest City to Palestine than anywhere else. Are there any fundamental differences um, on October 8th than there were last month or the month before? Could you note any fundamental differences in the situations that exist that would uh, cause us to lean one way or the other in making a decision? Um, and without looking back at all the other cases to see what the specific facts are, and I didn't do that before today, I mean, some of them they just want to transfer, some of them, you know, if they had children. You know, the fact that Ms. Cleve's neighbor's children um, transferred, I mean, that may be a fact that you want to look at, but, I mean, based on the circumstances that we have here, the difference is, is your understanding and um, of the concerns of the parents. I'm sure that you probably all... Um, either in the news or being contacted directly about how important this issue is and the fact that sometimes these kids are kind of trapped based on these old court orders. So a lot of it's more, I think, the fundamental difference of your understanding and the impact that it has. And I, I, would, I would caution us from considering um, the fact that her neighbors are, have been transferred. We don't have any information right. to verify that or the circumstances, the situations, or whatever their circumstances were that, that caused them right. to be transferred if they actually are. I'm not saying they're not, but I don't think that's something that we should consider. That's just my opinion, um, you know, because it could be several vari sure. uh, variables. Um, but I'm just wanting uh, the board to mm -hmm. think um, about uh, whether or not there's anything substantive uh, that's different between now and then. And are there any more questions, comments? I just wanted to thank Ms. Cleves for being here to represent her child. Uh, there, are, uh, This is my fourth meeting, I think, too. I think it's less than 80 for me to, to go. But this, of all the votes that we've taken, we've taken some very tough ones. I hate this one the most mm -hmm. because you want every child to go where that parent feels is best for the child to go. So thank you for coming back and helping us understand this. and and appreciating what we want what's best for you too. Okay. I think we'll do a roll call vote if there are no um, other questions. Um, so the motion is to approve the request for transfer. It has been moved by, remind me. If, Ms. if I may, Madam Chair, the, the actual motion should be to 
grant the appeal. Grant the correct? appeal. That's grant correct. the appeal. So moved by Mrs. Zook and second by Mr. Williamson. And so that that's our that's where Could we are. A, a clarification: Is it under um, under opportunity school or under under uh, public school choice? Public school. Public school choice. Yes. Okay, Mr. Mr. Commissioner. I, I want to say something okay. before we do this, Miss Dean. This is heart wrenching for me. As a parent of four children, wanting I, I feel you. <laughs> wanting the best for your child and wanting um, to give your child the same opportunities other people have. Um, and to agree with what you said before, I don't want to do the same thing and be consistent just because we've been consistent. Um, I, I'm struggling with this because um, I'm struggling with the legal ramifications of if we go forward with this compared to if we are consistent um, with all the others so I can speak to that a little bit I think not I'm not an attorney <laughs> I don't even play one at this meeting uh, regardless of which way we decide the uh, school district or the parent can take it to the courts if we decide in favor of the parent, it would be up to the district. If we decide in favor of the district, it would be up to the parent. So we are not the be all end all final for either of the parties. <clears throat> okay. Any other questions, comments? And I will go to Commissioner for roll call. <clears throat> okay, and we're voting on the motion to grant the appeal to the Cleves family under public school choice. Dr. Barth? No. Ms. Chambers? No. Ms. Dean? Yes. Mr. Williamson? Yes. Ms. Zook? Yes. Three votes to two. Okay, so the motion carries. Thank you. That